hi. Oh, Sagittarius, I'm so, so excited to talk to you. This month is quite the ride. It is quite the ride. July 2018 has a lot of energy to it. And I have to tell you, cancer season always is an interesting time for the Sagittarius clan, especially if you're Sagittarius rising, because this is eighth house energy. I'm going to start shuffling here. Eighth house energy is all about death, transformation, and rebirth. Um, and, you know, the best thing you can, you can really utilize this energy is the thing because it is transformative. Um, and I have my little note, as always, uh, which is, you know, opening up again, trusting in the process, trusting in it more than you have since Saturn has left. It's been a bit of a process. The last six months leading up to now have, have been a, a journey through trusting in the good stuff, trusting in manifestations showing up and being the best for you and sticking it through. It has been a lot of trust. Seven of swords popped out. So there you go, right? Um, it's interesting. My note is about opening up your heart and trusting in the process again because this is a card of lack of trust. Very interesting. But that's the thing, right? That's how we learn contrast. Um, and that's how we learn where we are in a process is by having those moments of feeling ill at ease, feeling nervous, feeling a little bit like, ooh, I want to I wanna trust my natural way, which, you know, Sagittarian energy very much understands oh, Four of Cups. Wow. See, this is, this is Cancer season if I ever saw it for the Sagittarian clan because it, you know, water energy water energy like this moves moves differently than fire energy it just does it it trickles through the rock and takes its time to come out it doesn't it's not action based it's not action based the way fire energy is and so it's learning to trust this much quieter calmer slower voice and i think that's the first half of this month um let's talk about this a little bit while i keep shuffling but the cards keep uh, Hi. The cards keep doing things. See that? See how that works? See how that works? Oh, yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. There are a lot of things going on. Um, Jupiter, your ruling planet, is going direct on the 10th. Um, it's still in Scorpio, but it is going direct again. So there's that directional energy where it's been a few months of kind of sitting back, integrating, not doing just the constant expansion, but a little bit of this, this just getting your energetic house in order, feeling through some of these things. The Jupiter Direct is going to be really nice. It's now, again, heading straight towards Sagittarius in November. Very exciting energy there. Of course, right after that, we have... Um, this Cancer New Moon, which is a partial solar eclipse most of us will not be able to see. Um, wow, whole, whole stack of cards came out here. We'll have to talk about these. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's this, this Cancer New Moon on the 13th. Is, it is beginning this eclipse experience that we are going to be having. And the eclipse for you, oh boy, just a whole bunch of cards just came out at the end of this month. I keep getting distracted because this is quite the whirlwind, Saggies. <laughs> okay, the, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to calm down here. Okay, so the Cancer New Moon is interesting. It's in your eighth house. Where is that transformation? The shedding of an old skin. And what I love about this is it's a che it's a final check-in from this learning curve that we have been on. 
And this six months has actually been a very much of a tidying up. It's been a preparatory energy in many ways. And it's been about the ease and the quiet. And I know a lot of you have been freaked out by that quiet because where, where are the big shifts? Where are the big changes? Where is this movement? Where is the next big adventure? And why isn't it completely manifesting? It's just parts and pieces and bits and bobs. Um, so this is the last check-in. And it's really powerful. So it's going to be extremely powerful full moon or new moon for the Sagittarius because of the fact that it's in the eighth house of death and transformation. In fact, I just have to show you the first four cards. Pretty epic, right? Like this is, this is some um, extraterrestrial big lens refocusing, getting your lenses all polished and scrubbed and cleared you know there there are astronomers out there in the world who are creating these giant mirrors that have to be so perfectly polished in order to get the magnifying ability to see as far as they want to be able to see out in our galaxy and um i have a feeling like that's kind of the way this new moon is it's it's you've been and the last six months have been, it's been about polishing these mirrors so profoundly so that you can get the new site. But you can't just skip, you've got to polish it, right? Okay, so we have that new moon. Then the second half of this month is really interesting. We, we go into Leo season, um, which is fantastic for you. This is ninth house expansive energy. We are looking at the big picture. We are looking at the big world travel. We are doing all of that. And of course, then Mercury goes retrograde in your ninth house. So there's this forward motion. We have Jupiter going direct again. We have Leo season, which is so supportive of you. And then we have Mercury retrograde in your ninth house, where you're having to slow down and look in. But I love Mercury retrograde. It's a time to rest, and it's a time to be diligent about where you're making plans. Um, rather than it just being action, 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 you just check in and you look in. Okay, ninth house energy. Let's expand, let's go, let's explore, let's experiment. But let's slow down also and make sure that we are really doing this with authenticity. And then, of course, the big event in my mind this month is the Aquarian full moon. It's a total lunar eclipse. It will be happening. It will be visible in the southern hemisphere. Um, us in the northern hemisphere, we will not be seeing anything, however powerful, right? Um, I'm getting, I just got such huge goosebumps. Whenever I bring up this moon, my whole body just lights up. This is your third house. And this is an energy, it's happening right after this Mercury retrograde in your ninth house. Then you have this third house eclipse. How you're communicating your visions, your dreams, who you have close to you. All of that is going to be coming up. I think it's going to be extremely revolutionary moon. Buckle up. <laughs> so let's talk about the cards. It took me a while to get there because not only were these cards just pouring out, but then they were mirroring back to me what's going on with this moon cycle and with these retrogrades and these directs. Okay. So yeah, the first four cards here are all about the lead up and through the new moon and this death transformation mirror polishing thing we have going on. Okay, there's that distrust, right? There's that nervousness about fully showing of your heart and your trust again. That buoyant, wonderful, warm spirit that Sagittarians bring. We've talked about this so many times before. People cozy up to you because you bring warmth. And normally, in general, you're just so willing to share that heart. You're just so willing to just say, yeah, here it is. Yeah, have, have some warmth. Have at it. But there were some learning curves going on last year and the year before and with Saturn and then coming out of that where it was like, oh, sometimes it's not a good idea for me to share my heart. Sometimes that hurts. Sometimes that leaves me with nothing left. So this new moon and that tail end of the Jupiter retrograde and then it going forward. It's like just remembering that, that that can be released now. And instead what we're doing is we are waiting for the incoming of a big adventure. I just got goosebumps again. 
Okay, so the Four of Cups is very powerful. Um, it, is, it does totally represent cancer season because cancer season, you do slow down. You do look internal. You do ride the wave of that water. It's all there to get you moving to this big new pasture. The star is associated with Aquarian energy, right? It's associated with expansion and with pushing into the next vision of our shared humanity and our shared world. Also about getting what you want. The only way you can get this next iteration, this big adventure that is about deep connection, that is about world travel, that is about starting new projects that take you to very wealthy, healthful places. The only way you're going to get there is to go through a bit of this death transformation. There is check-in going on here. There is a major check-in point going on here the first half of this month because while you guys are all about expansion, you are all about flowing in the moment, you are all about trust and open-heartedness. I love you guys so much. Did I ever tell you that? You have all of that. Those are all natural abilities you have. But I know that underneath that, there have been these wobbly, worried moments. And this is a check-in point where you get to shed that worry and that fear that has lingered a little bit. That has It has been lingering. There has been this, you have to kind of keep going back and looking at where you were learning these heart lessons. And this month is really like, goodbye to that. It's a final farewell to that energy. Um, and beyond that is this powerful new beginning. So let's talk about that because the second half of this month is extremely powerful. I can't even look at these cards without my entire body. I've been getting so many shivers for this month, but wow. Um, the, the horizons are opening up for you the the world travel the the richness the deliciousness the gooiness of what's coming next it is this is a luscious luscious meal that is coming your way it's just very rich and you're getting the previews and you're starting to make the plans for this in July 3 of wands 9 of cups 2 of swords and then three more cards came out here, folks. Uh, Four of Wands, Ace of Cups, Lovers. Can I just stop the video there? Because, damn. Sag, that Jupiter Direct is doing some good things for you. It's just time. It's time... It's time for the shift. It's time. It's just time to be in this freer, easier to breathe, natural way that you have. It's it's been great going into the depths. It's been great poking around and finding these different things and slowing down. But you know what? What's also great is having the adventures, <laughs> and here it is. So three of three of wands. This is world travel. This is so world travel. This is really um, opportunities coming to meet you, things opening up on that horizon. So I see a lot of you, while we do have a Mercury retrograde happening at the very end of the month that is in your ninth house of world travel, what I do see with that, and I'm feeling with that, is if this is an opportunity to start very deliberately setting your goals when it comes to this. Like, this is what I'm saying about like these eclipses. I keep getting shivers. I'm trying to talk. This month is extremely powerful manifesting-wise if you can ride the wave. The good stuff, whatever deliberate plans you make, bring with it a wealth of heart-centered love. It's funny because these two cards actually are not action-based in any way, even though Three of Wands is often associated with action. This is the easier way of letting things flow. Um... And I just have this feeling like really great deep connections come in for you and, and projects and ideas and just those sparks, they come in really easily. As long as you're relaxed, 
especially the first half of the month. But then as you relax for the first half of the month, the second half of the month starts to deliver this, these goods to you, starts to deliver these new horizons to you. Now, as always, when you start to get the delivery of what you've been asking for, you start to get the open doors, you start to get the good stuff coming in so clearly, you hit a decision-making crux. Here it is, Two of Swords. Some of you may feel a little nervous to put your foot on a path. There may be a decision you have to make one way or another, or a few decisions you have to make as far as, you know, where you're going to be living or what travel you're going to be doing or where you're putting your energy or where you're putting effort. You could really get in your head about this. Um, because there is a choice to be made here. There are choices to be made here. There are a lot of critical choices to be made here. In fact, I think that full moon with that eclipse is going to clarify all of that for you. Um, because this card, when it shows up, it means there is still that little bit of nervousness that if you trust the actions you want to take, if you trust those, those things you want to bring in, will they really show up? Will they really show up? It's just a little pause there. But the answer is yes. You know, these last three cards, the lover's card just fell on the floor, just a moment. These last three cards, yes, they speak to committed relationship. They speak to beginnings and travel and adventure and joy and buoyancy and communication and conversation and new beginnings and opening up. Yes, they speak to all of that. It doesn't just have to be relationships, though, absolutely. Um, this is about, like I said, jubilation, celebration, graduation, feeling like you can communicate, feeling that you are full, that your cup is full, that you have the people around you that really work for you. Um, and it's the beginning of a new chapter, definitively. Definitively. And this is, I mean, maybe I have been saying this over this year, that there's been these check-ins, this release of the old Saturn energy, this learning to trust again. And yeah, it's been going back and forth all this year. But this month, at the end of this month, as we go into August, this is truly, definitively an entire new book. Um, that's what those last three cards tell me. It's an entire new book. The, this is no longer uh, the old book. Those last chapters were written out, and now it's the start of a new beginning. I just, I see these horizons opening up for you all. Oh, there's going to be so many good surprises in there. There's going to be so much good stuff. Four of Cups. I was pulling my final card. Four the month from my cosmic tarot and of course it was four of cups we got it earlier we got it here at the end what that tells me about the process of inviting in this new chapter getting all this good transformation in getting all this goodies as far as tra making travel plans getting that big unimaginable horizon it's starting to become imaginable it's starting to really become imaginable Butterflies in the stomach. All right. Um, I love this. Being a Sag rising. This is why I want to see too. <laughs> um, Four of Cups, though, is your power play, at least especially through Cancer season. Because the Four of Cups, it's like... It's that pause. It's that... Good, full, rich thing coming to meet you. And you can just feel it. You can just feel it. But this is the card of ultimate trust. Ultimate trust in how those things are delivered to you. And not only that, but ultimate trust in yourself that when the knock on the door comes, you will know to answer it and to open the door, and you will know to step through. It's both. 
It's both relaxing enough to let the thing come meet you and also relaxing enough to know you can go forward and meet it. It's both. There's a lot of checking in going on here. And that's because when you are about to really embark on some very exposed, exciting new journeys, when you're about to do that, you do have that moment of deciding you are going to trust. You do have that moment of deciding you are going to slow down and welcome and put your welcome mat out. And I've been saying that with fire signs. This is the cancer season is a very good time to get your welcome mat dusted off and put out um, because the next phase is so powerful. It's so powerful. Second half of this year, the last five months of this year are so rich, so rich for Sagittarians. The, a lot of it you can't see from here. You, you just can't. Um, it would be so much overload to know everything that's coming in for you in the next six months. Five, the last five months of this year especially, the last four months of this year especially, especially. It is so rich and exciting and surprising and, and powerful that we are just getting the preview of it now. And as it unfolds, you'll be seeing what I'm talking about. I'm really excited for the Sag clan, though. I am very excited. It's a powerful month. You're going to have to ride these waves because they're coming in and going out. It's just something that's happening. So with that being said, come join me on Instagram at the Sarah Tara. I'd love to see you over there. I'd love to see you over there. My calendar is a little crazy right now, but I am going to be doing some August video recorded readings. I will be traveling um, in August. So if you're interested in one of those, please email me. I'd love to work with you and talk about this more. And I will also be doing sessions again at the end of August and into September. So for the live sessions, um, you can either email me or check out my calendar and book there. I hope to see you all very soon. I'm sitting here with my pink loon jewelry, as usual, 15% off. Go check her out in the description box. And Jill Sands, look at these amazing paintings. I could get lost in this one for hours. Speaking of polishing mirrors and thinking about the big vision. And then also this beautiful cancer painting. She will have prints at her store, so go check her out. Um, I am so honored to sit here with you all. I love you so much. I will see you for more interesting adventures in August. And have a beautiful July. My loves.